Hi there, Lisa Rana here, and welcome to another Assemble This video. For today's cards, I'm going to be trying the Karen Watercolor Brush Marker Pros, and they really create such a nice, vibrant color on these gorgeous rose stamped images. I just love this spray of flowers. It is from the January 2021 sentiment kit by Unity Stamp Company, and it has lots of great little sentiments included in this set. So I have my work surface kind of prepped. I'm using some watercolor paper since we're using watercolor pens, and it's a medium, and, I've, and I'll be using lots of water, so I wanted to make sure the paper could handle that. I just have a baby wipe to the side so I can clean off my brush, plus I have my water cup ready to go. The watercolor paper I'm going to be using is the Fabriano 140 pound hot press watercolor paper. I generally use this for most of my watercolor mediums. I like the smoothness of the paper and it has a nice white quality to it as well. And this is the first time I'm trying out the Brush Marker Pros, so I have not played with these yet, so this is kind of a trial and error. These first couple blooms, I'm just kind of getting the feel of how the pigment works on the paper and kind of how I want to apply it. So I have some tips that I'll share with you as I go along. Just some things that I've learned um, playing around with these markers and um, kind of getting my technique down. The first thing is whenever I watercolor, I have no training in this. This is all just trial and error from years of playing with coloring and markers and different types of mediums. So I have my own method of watercoloring. It's probably not what most watercolor artists would use, or maybe it is, I have no idea. This is just how I've made it up over the years. I generally will lay down a wash of color because I'm kind of lazy, and I just want to kind of get a base going. And with these Karen markers, I've noticed that if you lay the ink color down directly onto the paper, some of the colors don't blend as well as others. So sometimes you can get that line of of ink down and then go in with water and it'll blend easily and some of the other colors will sink into that paper and create a line of color that does not blend out into the paper as well. So over some trial and error, I do like the look of both of those, but I want to be able to control when I get that look. So when I start out using these brush markers, my biggest tip would be to lay down a little bit of water first and then lay down just a wash of color too. That way you're prepping the paper for this marker application of paints. Normally when you use watercolor from pans, you're picking it up and mixing it with water or picking it up from a palette and then applying it with the brush. So it's not normal to apply it with a marker brush tip. And I think that's the biggest learning curve I have with these is I have to remember to add a little bit of water before I use my brush marker onto the paper so I don't get a stark line when I'm not ready for it. So I've been playing around for a little bit trying to lay down some color. I zoomed in a little bit closer so you can kind of see what I'm doing. And here's a, an, another thing I learned is not to use a lot of water with these markers. The more water you use trying to blend um, the ink out can create the paper to kind of lift and peel and kind of um, tear apart. So we want to keep the, the water down to a minimum. In working with this large bloom, I laid down just a little bit of water and then I touched my marker to that water to that water on the on the paper and that just kind of pulls the the ink from the pen and then I use my brush to spread it out and to create a wash. Down in the bottom part here I forgot to lay down my water first and I ended up with a 
stark line of the ink where I just drew some of the, the pigment onto the bloom. I'm not so worried about that now. Uh, in, in starting out and trying these markers, I was really worried about that stark line. But I'm going to be building up color with layer after layer, letting the color kind of dry in between or adding a, a color over on top. Um, so that is going to end up blending out. So I don't get so focused on that line being there if you're not ready for it because you can always add another layer later and it will eventually soften and kind of blend in. So that's another big tip is if you if you get a line that you're not prepared for, don't focus on it. Add a lot of water to try to blend it out. Let it dry and you can add another layer of color on top of it and it should kind of blend out that way. Now when I shade blooms, uh, the biggest thing I do is start down with my layer of color that's the lightest and then I'll lay up layer on top of that a deeper darker color either the same color or contrasting color or an, a next layer deeper to create that shadow and i'll always create a shadow behind a, a leaf or a petal that is in front of something so if it's in front it's going to be lighter if it's behind it's going to be darker so that's what I'm going to be doing with my next color. It is the Pale Orange 357. And then I'm layering over that a bit of Soft Peach 201. And this is just going to create another level of, of dimension and colors. This is one of my favorite roses in nature. I believe it is the Judy Garland and it has a peachy yellow pink color to it so I always try to mimic that when I when I'm creating my roses I just think it's a beautiful color combo so I'm laying down that soft peach color and I'm starting where the darkest part of the petal would be which is at the base of the petal and probably underneath another petal. And that's gonna create the, the depth of shadow and light. And so I'm that's where I'm kind of focusing my pink color. So you can see how I'm layering it and lining right underneath the petal above, and that's gonna start creating that shadow to create a bit of depth to help that, that petal in front kind of pop up. And you can see that I am just putting down the marker directly on top of that orangish G color. Um, since I already prepped the paper with that base line, I'm not so worried about creating a stark line from the marker. It already has a nice base to kind of blend into. And so I feel freer of actually applying the pigment directly onto that bloom. And I'm just going to go along and keep doing each petal by petal, focusing on the innermost edge where it's going to be darkest, and then just blending it out with the lightest bit of water. And by applying the ink directly to paper, you're going to get a much more intense pigment. If I were to pick that up with water from my um, palette, like if I could, I could draw that onto my um, media mat that I have my paper on and then pick it up with my paintbrush and some water that will lighten up that color so it's not so intense. But in this case, I'm just laying it directly down onto the paper because I want that intense contrast. And it's blending out beautifully. I do like how it blends. It blends much easier than the Arteza markers, much easier for me than the Zig markers. So I'm very happy with the, the way these markers are blending and the way I'm able to um, manipulate them on the paper. So I'm just keep adding and, and going over. This is a very slow process. I have sped up the video. This 
entire image probably took me an hour to watercolor, which is very slow. I'm a very slow colorer anyway, um, but I did take my time. I wanted to really create a depth of image in, in the coloring of this process and to really kind of learn how to use these markers as well. So it probably took me longer than it would normally say with distress inks. I can usually watercolor very fast with distress inks. So this took me probably double the time just because there was a learning curve and I am creating much more depth in my watercoloring than I usually do. So I've already done one layer of the kind of the maybe it's a pale orange that I used and then I've done another layer of the soft peach and then I'll do another layer of the, the soft peach to create even more depth. So I'm doing layer after layer. Probably I'll end up with four layers of color before I'm done with this bloom. And once I'm happy with this particular layer, I'll move on to another bloom and then let it kind of dry so I can come back to it and and create another level of depth but I want it to dry in between so that pigment will kind of layer on top of the previous layer if I keep doing wet upon wet upon wet it'll just kind of soak and blend all together and I won't get much contrast I just noticed that there was a tiny little bloom just starting down here so I added a little bit of color to that. So now we're just gonna do this bloom up top here. I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. The process is still the same. I'm going to add that soft peach color to the base of the petal and then blend it up and outwards and anywhere that would be behind another petal I'll again add that soft peach to create that, that depth of image. So now that I've finished all my soft peach coloring, I probably did one layer of orange, two layers of soft peach, and now I'm going to come in with this rose pink 168 and just create one final darker depth layer of color. And I'm also doing the little berries here. I'm just dropping on a bit of pigment and then just blending it slightly with uh, a little bit of water on my paintbrush. As I moved along through this image, the amount of water on my paintbrush kept getting less and less. I felt like I had much more control with a less amount of water. So for this application, I want to have even more control over the depth of that pink color. So I'm picking it up using my paintbrush directly from the brush marker. And this way I can get an, an intense color and then apply it to the paper using my paintbrush. And I feel like that was a nicer blend. It is a starker contrast, so you'll see that sit on top of the, the peach color a bit more and it'll create a nice shadow for me and I like the pink color as well it's pretty vibrant and that is what I'm using to create the deepest darkest part of my shadow so I get a little bit more of that 3d look in my image next we're just going to color in these leaves I use the combo of three colors I have a sulfur yellow which is my lightest color my cap did not have the the number on the, the lid so I don't know what the number is but the color is sulfur yellow and then I'm using a lime green 071 for my medium tone and then an olive green 281 for my deepest darkest uh, shadow color again using the same process of laying down a nice layer of color put down a little bit of water touched my marker to that water and then spread that out with my paintbrush
I also use the method of picking up the color from my marker with my paintbrush by touching the end to the pen. I do like that process. I started using it more and more as I went through coloring this image. I just felt like I got a nice intense amount of pigment uh, rather than laying that ink directly down onto the paper. Another couple tips with these markers. I found that I did have to be careful and <laughs> pay attention so I didn't drop them. I, I tend to drop things if I'm not um, being extra careful, so be mindful of that when you're coloring. I'm more used to having a palette to the side, and um, I'm kind of clumsy, so I did tend to drop it a few times. I got a little bit of pink on the corner of my paper, which I'll end up trimming off later. Um, I did drop a pen directly into the center of one of my blooms, but it blended out luckily, so it was it was okay in the end. The other thing I would recommend is to put your caps on the end of your pen. The barrel of these pens do not have numbers. And so um, as I left all my caps on the tabletop, I wasn't really sure which pen cap went with which barrel. So take your cap off, put it on the end of your barrel so you don't run into that problem. For this um, background, I decided to take this pretty blue, I think it's Cool Aqua 204. I scribbled it down onto my media mat and then picked up a good amount of water to lighten that up. I really just wanted a light wash and I picked that up with my paintbrush and then just did a light wash around the, the roses. It's one of my favorite ways of, to, of creating a bit of pop behind that. That image is with a nice cool light blue and then I'm just adding a bit of Wink of Stella I let my my watercolor panel dry completely I ran that through my die cut machine so I had a nice flat panel and then I added that Wink of Stella and now I'm just going to build my cards up. I'm keeping it fairly simple. I just think the watercolor of this image is so pretty I don't want to take away from it so I'm just adding some strips of pattern paper that I thought accented my panels of watercoloring and just putting a strip down the sides of my cards. It's probably about two inches and then I'm just trimming those off to match my card fronts. I'm using a few doily edgers uh, to die cut my watercolor panels. Just laying that down on my mat and using that as a guide to line up my doily edgers so they're straight up and down. Just like that and I'm going to tack that down with some washi tape and then run that through my die cut machine. So I have a nice pretty scalloped doily edge for each of these watercolor panels. What I love about these floral blooms is that they can go either direction. And I thought about flipping the colors here, so I just flipped them around. And I kind of like the, the green and the, the pink and then the blues with the, the black. So flip those back around. So it's kind of nice that those floral images can go in almost any direction. And now I'm just going to glue those down with some foam adhesive. I put that on the back of the panels and press that down and then I'm going to do the same thing with the other panel. Just tack that down. Wanted to make sure my card was going in the, the right direction. <laughs> Wanted to make sure it opened correctly. So we're just going to put that down. And I just like the simplicity of these cards. Again, I wanted that watercolor to really be the shining um, part of these cards. I grabbed a couple sentiments from the kit. I have a happy Mother's Day and then uh, a happy birthday. And I embossed those, or white, white heat embossed those on some black cardstock. And I'm just going to pop those up on my front sear. And then to finish everything off, I just added a few uh, kind of sparkly things. They're rhinestones and water droplets. And I'm just kind of putting those down in a in a pattern on the front just adds a little bit of sparkle of shine which of course I always love to add to my cards 
And here are our finished cards. I just love the vibrant colors from the Karen Brush Pro markers. They were really easy to use after I got the hang of how the pigment reacted to the water and paper. I also love this rose bouquet. It can e easily be used in either direction and for lots of occasions. I just paired them with a pretty doily edge and a few sparkly drops and called these watercolored cards done. As always, I have my supplies linked below in the description of this video. If you have any questions or a sweet comment, post below. Thank you so much for watching. I hope it was helpful and informative, and I'll see you again soon for another video. Bye!